Uh, call to order the meeting of the Westford Conservation Commission on Wednesday, October 12th, 2022, starting at 7 p.m. And the first item on the agenda is open forum. Do any members of the commission have items for open forum? Matt, do you have anything? I have a couple. Um, last time you'll hear this for a while, special town meeting is October 17th, Monday, October 17th at 7 p.m. at the Westford Academy Gym. Please, everyone attend. Uh, the Mass Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs recently downgraded uh, the Northeast drought monitoring region from critical drought to significant, so we're down from three to level two. Um, what was in the meeting packet was the one from September. Um, they came out, I think, yesterday with a new one, so um, the rain has certainly been beneficial. Okay, I, I wasn't um, I can't hear you behind your screen. Okay, um, and updated plans were received from the, uh, for the projects at 8 Callista Terrace and 7 Juneberry as were discussed at the last meeting. Um, you know, I think there were a couple plan revisions and updates that they had to make and were included as miscellaneous. Um, additionally, 7 June, the 7 Juneberry reached out. Um, the contractor is not available until mid-November. Um, and wanted to know if it would be acceptable for the commission for the restoration work to occur in the spring um, so stabilization and the vegetation growth can occur. I and I just wanted to that. run that by the commission prior to responding. Still looking for a motion? Uh, it doesn't have to be a motion, but I could just wanted to get people's thoughts. <laughs> okay. I don't have trouble with that. Nobody have any concerns? Okay. That's, okay. I will respond. Thank you. Okay. Um, the members of the audience have items for open forum. Good evening. I'm Susan McNeil Spooler, 232 Concord Road. I'm asking on behalf of my neighbor, uh, Dan McManus, at 230 Concord Road. We share a driveway and we are getting it paved right now, and he's uh, trying to put up a deck. And when our house was built in 1986, a, pond, a man made pond was put in, and that man made pond was put in uh, wetlands, unbeknownst to us. We didn't build the house, we built it, moved in about 10 years later. So, um, the, because of the, yeah, there's my house way in the back. So, we share a driveway, and I'm uh, just trying to um, ask you if we could um, see about the, the permit seeing as um, they did have a deck and they are trying to just put up a new deck in its place. So the property, the, a building permit application was received uh, from the homeowners at 230 Concord Road, this parcel, yep. um, this is 232. The man-made pond is in this general vicinity. That's right there, yes. Um, it was constructed via DEP file number 334-0048. I want to two digits. get two digits. Yeah, this this was an old one. I'm not sure how, if, if, if we would allow it today. Um, but the building permit application is for the demolition of this deck here, this small little uh, outcropping, with the reconstruction of a deck wrapping, going up and wrapping around um, the sunroom or um, the 100 foot buffer based upon the septic plan that uh, was in the Board of Health files um, almost goes right down the center line or the center of the roof line. Um, and as such, it is, it would be considered a minor activity under the Wetlands Protection Act under 310 CMR 10.2B2E. We'll never know. Um, but it um, would it is where the proposed work is within a hundred feet um, and isn't uh, the rep and is more significant than the uh, minor activities allowed under uh, administrative review under the rules and regulations. I was uh, I'm was disinclined to sign off on the building permit as they likely would need to come before the commission as they are increasing the, uh, with a request for determination of applicability as the scope of work is um, 
more significant than the uh, administrative minor administrative approval allows. It's more than a replacement of the current deck. It's right, an enlargement as well. And so I mean, so the existing deck is uh, was it ten by ten? Ten by twelve, and there's a, a second deck. So, so typically wouldn't we see this as a request for determination and issue them uh, either a conditional or a negative mm -hmm. yes. yeah. so why aren't we, why are we deviating from that process that was what I um, provided to the contractor and when I spoke with uh, Ms. Spooler yesterday that was my thought as well again this is you know it's not it is consistent with things that have come before the commission and you know I I'd like to think I try to shoehorn and fit as many things as possible and the minor activities especially that is consistent with the commission's uh, wishes when when the rules and regulations were updated um, but I just can't you know fit mm -hmm. it into that box yeah I mean I think you know that that we have there are processes in place yes. and we want the paper trail so that if down the road somebody Absolutely. comes and raises a yes. question there's there's the filing and then it's um, you know it's th there never there are no questions there later was a public on. hearing there's and a public you hearing. know determination sure. was yes. made and, and still yeah. yes Absolutely. Yes. Well, Madam, Madam, Madam Chair is just the thing is is that we're putting in a, a driveway that's and where we share the joint in between in, next to the pond and I, I didn't need to have a real really a permit for that I mean the typically the replacement of existing driveway I mean if the driveway was approved or has been approved or predates the you know the replacement of an existing driveway um, you know is consistently allowed as you know people need to be able to access their house it's it that too is a minor activity under the act um, but we're in the bylaw um, but this one isn't well it's right. this I mean you, and you and you looked at the at saying I mean if it was identical to what was being replaced that would be one thing but it's a dish, it, you know it's increased in no in you're saying the driveway I'm, I no, I'm, I know what you're saying about the driveway yeah. and I understand why yeah. that you know gets you know considered to be like a you know a minor alteration or whatever that can be dealt without before coming to the Commission but uh, the deck is larger than what was originally constructed and it wraps so since it's larger in scope I say we follow our procedure well currently and unfortunately the the contractor took the deck down and then they came to see about the permit okay. and so my concern as the daughter of a firefighter is that they don't have a rear exit to the house Right now, it's like open the, open the door, and it's like a, an eight-foot drop to the ground. I Correct would, me if I'm wrong. I, I would be. I can check with the building commissioner and check with uh, applicable building codes. But you know, if a temporary stairs, you know, of minimum regulatory width and a grade, um, you know, needs to be installed to satisfy safety concerns, that would, you know, I'd be more than happy to work with and issue an emergency oh, certification for the okay. for the stairs to be installed while um, you know the request for determination and the process is being followed so what can be done moving forward here to have the deck be built filing a request for determination of applicability with the Commission um, if you watch the first two public hearings of the evening um, they are similar uh, requests you know uh, one is a shed within the buffer within 100 feet greater than 50. The second is a uh, fence. Uh, both are minor activities under the Wetlands Protection Act, but okay. uh, not considered minor activities under the wetland bylaw. Okay, because as as an, as a neighbor, I'll be happy if I need to sign off on anything or, you know. Speaking for him, it's good, but he still has to file. Yeah. No, no, I just I understand, but I'm just saying I'm in support. Yeah. of what of what he's trying to do you'll receive a public notice of the <laughs> okay and and just one point because we've had issues with this recently is also feedback to the con contractor they should be pulling the permits before they start doing work because we've had a couple of really difficult situations yeah. 
because contractors did not do that and we need to send the message to that community and they're looking for forgiveness instead of you know after the fact yeah. and that's yeah, it's more expensive it just, after the fact. The permit was applied for in June. In August, September, he was told, oh, no, you have to have a plot plan done. So we had a plot plan okay. done. So, and then he assumed that since he okay. delivered the plot plan, that he would stop the work and go get the permit. And he was told, oh, no, we okay. don't have it yet. Okay, so, so he, did, he, did at least, he did at least start the process well, on time. time yep, yeah, okay, that's good news. Yeah, we just good, good news to you. Not so good to no. Us. Yeah, we get that. Yes, we get you know, that. But it just yeah. But there is a the process to, to yes. follow. Yes, we have no choice. Okay, correct. But we can expedite it by putting it in place. Yeah, but it, Matt. It, well, as soon as they're ready, they can come before the commission. Yeah, right. well, we can schedule for the next. Yeah, yeah. whenever they're ready. We meet, if, we meet uh, twice a month. Yeah, I can work with them uh, tomorrow with. That's working great. to get them on the next agenda. I think there still should be sufficient time. Okay. On the 28th? 26th. The 26th, right, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Still off. I don't want no Friday meetings, please. <laughs> okay. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Um, any other items for open forum? Okay, um, moving on to our 7.05 p.m. agenda item. It's a request for certificate of compliance for 6 Lakeshore Drive South, DEP file number 3341734. Good evening. Jeff Hanford representing the applicants at 6 Lakeshore Drive South. Um, we're here tonight uh, for an approval on a request for a certificate of compliance. Um, we did, uh, as you can see, there's our as-built plan. Uh, we did a site visit um, with Matt and uh, the owner. <clears throat> and other than uh, what was provided in the proposed plan, the difference now, uh, there was Where's one in the middle? Yeah. Oh, there we there go. Is. Um, right here, there's a small retaining wall that was added that wasn't on the original plan, um, and it was to level off this area here, uh, which has been uh, covered in crushed stone. Um, they use this area here um, to park their boat uh, in the off season and uh, they also put in the shed. Um, it is within the buffer zone. Uh, it's about 86 feet from uh, the lake. The plan was approved with the retaining wall uh, 56 feet from the lake, which was installed where it was originally proposed. So um, Matt asked us to add that small retaining wall, revise the plan, and uh, point that out to you tonight uh, for any discussion you might have prior to uh, voting on the certificate. Jim? When this project came before us um, with the old building in place, I remember one of the topics of concern was the, uh, the septic system for the old building was found to be in the right of way. Yes. And that was the good news was that was going to be uh, removed or filled in accordance with Title V and abandoned. But why is the shed in the yeah in the right of way? Built in the right of way. Um, yeah, we noted that in uh, when we picked up the retaining wall. Um, it's very deceiving out there where that property line is. Right, as you can see, yeah, as surveyed, you can see right? the the edge of the roadway is right. down here. Right up here, it says edge no. of right of way. Right, right. I that's mean, the edge of the traveled road. way. No, it says right of way, ROW, right? Right, no, right. but the gravel road. But what I'm travel. pointing out is the traveled way, yeah. part of it's in the right of way, part of it's out of the right of way on somebody else's property on this side. Right, but that's yeah. not of our concern here, right? That's the, the neighbor's no. problem. This is the. This if is I the just let me, just okay. let me finish, Jim. Uh, what I was saying was it's deceiving when you're out there 
because you usually don't come across a situation where the traveled way is actually so far off the right of way as opposed to being in the center. If you look up and down the street, there's encroachments all the way up and down because of it. Um, they didn't realize it when the shed was installed. They didn't do it, they had somebody do it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to take a look at that to see uh, what an alternative location is. But uh, if, if it's gotta be moved, then it's probably gonna be moved over into this area. Uh, it's outside the buffer zone. So as it is right now, there's maybe a foot or two in the buffer zone. So as far as a concern for the commission, um, right now, it's really this retaining wall which would remain regardless of that shed. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that's quite a bit further than the nearest point here which was approved uh, and built as approved, uh, as well as this corner. Uh, they, considering what they were working with, you're familiar with the steep slope all through here. Uh, they did a very, very good job of building such a large retaining wall and maintaining the location as per the proposed plan. Uh, it, there was very, very little deviation on that wall. Uh, this small wall here uh, is less than four feet in height, doesn't require a building permit, uh, relatively minor. So uh, other than that, everything is as per the proposed plan. Eric? So an issue of compliance is being sought for as Jim notes, you know, I've got, we have a shed in the right of way. If, if we issue the certificate of compliance based on the as bill plan that we know the shed is in the right of way, um, where's the leverage to get it moved after we issue the certificate or the certificate of compliance? Or does that fall under, is that something? The planner, not, probably The, not the building. Department. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, building just, department and zoning. I mean, so that's kind of it's not really our, uh, you know, within the commission's jurisdiction. Do you bring that to the attention of building and planning? Yes. Tomorrow or whenever. I can certainly do that. Mm -hmm. Most of it is, is okay by me in terms of conservation. Right. Again, you know, my yeah. my primary concern, you know, when having the plan revised was to show this additional retaining wall. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And yeah, no, I guess that. And it wasn't, you know, the permission, the modification wasn't sought by the sought to the commission, mm -hmm. and you know, this is uh, something that wanted to. But I mean, we also have that wood retaining wall beyond this poured wall that goes out and around the shed as well. So it's not mm -hmm. just the shed, it's, it's the wooden retaining wall around the shed. Yep. You know, I just would hate that all of a sudden to become permanent. What do you mean by permanent? Like it should be moved. It wasn't part of what was originally planned. The, the shed there or that uh, retaining wall. Well, but I mean, again, that's something, you know, there's a portion that we're that we're saying we're okay with, but there's that portion that's also outside that wasn't originally proposed, I don't believe. Well, so what I think the point that you're getting at is normally um, the builder says, you know, or, or whatever in the conversations, it's like, oh, gee, it would be good to have um, a, retaining, a retaining wall here to level things out, and in which case um, a request would come to the commission that says, is this a minor modification? And, you know, we, we talk about and approve those things prior to getting to the point of certificate of compliance requests, right? Usually. Usually. Well, sometimes it shows up in the as built. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, I'm okay with the, the whole plan, but I think planning and, uh, and a town engineer needs to know that it's being Zoning built and the building commissioner, I'll, I'll, I'll address this with them but tomorrow. That, I'm, okay. I'm okay so with the fact the that. The rest of it, yes, the plan didn't show that, that retaining wall, but it is 86 feet which is way beyond what we what we did authorize and I don't think it's a, a significant impact to, to the uh, no I don't have an issue with that either right. it's just built my issue is building in the right away oh same here yeah okay. that's not that's okay. not our yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. obligation okay. so, so we get a report from 
Yeah, but we do note it, so it, it is our kind of our obligation to pass it along. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so while it's noted that um, the changes were not reviewed prior to the as built, um, nobody has any, does that have any, any issues? No. 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 Okay. In that case, Matt, any other? Recommend the certificate of compliance be issued for. With an understanding that this is Okay, so can I have a motion to issue a certificate of compliance for DEP OCL number 334-1734? So Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there something to be signed? Um, moving on to our 7 10 p.m. agenda item. It's a public hearing for Salmonson, Salmonson, 68 Pleasant Street. I'll go by either. Okay. <laughs> Under Westford's non zoning wetlands bylaw chapter 171, the Westford Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, October 12th, 2022, at 7 10 p.m. in room, meeting room 201 at Town Hall, 55 Main Street to consider the request for determination of applicability application for Todd Solomonson for installation of a prefabricated 10 by 16 shed on a 12 by 18 crushed stone pad with a, within 100 feet of bordering vegetated wetlands and bordering land subject to flooding at 68 Pleasant Street. Okay, good evening. Good for evening. the record, you are? Todd Solomonson. Okay. Yep, so we're looking to um, put down a 12, uh, 10 by 16 prefab shed um, in our backyard within a, a, a pre-existing uh, fence line. You can see, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how far away it is from the wetlands back there, uh, but the reason for that choice is you can see we have a lot of trees and things back there. And in that top picture, that back left-hand corner, it's the most reasonable place for us to, uh, to put that shed. So you're just going to put crushed stone underneath of the shed and then sit it on block, cinder block, or? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, and you're storing the, the shed. Would the shed be used to store any petroleum products, be, pesticides, No, it has, Matt. That's all in the okay. garage. That's going to be That's what we lawn like equipment, hear. surfing boards, hockey okay. equipment. What kind of floors in the shed? Uh, the, uh, plywood. Jim? Is the ground beyond the fence uh, as flat as in the fenced area? Yes, it is. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Um, Matt, any? I have no comments. Any comments or questions from members of the audience? Um, a regular negative or a conditional negative? Uh, I mean, we could put the conditional that, you know, the regular, the no petroleum. Pr He's not proposing okay. to, but we can say, you know, okay. gives us something to fall back on if petroleum products or pesticides are ever uh, stored there. Okay, can I have a motion to issue a conditional negative determination? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, um, may I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, um, Matt will be in touch. Yep. So, moving on to our 7.15 p.m. agenda item, public hearing for Lavasser, 34 Kersey Circle. Under Westford's non-zoning wetlands bylaw, Chapter 171, the Westford Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, October 12, 2022, at 7.15 p.m. in meeting room 201 at Town Hall, 55 Main Street, to consider the request for determination of applicability application for Nicole Lavasser for installation of approximately 300 feet of fence within 100 feet of bordering vegetative wetlands and within 200 feet of a perennial stream at 34 Kersey Circle. Good evening. Hi. How are you? Good. Um, your name for the record? 
Nicola Vassar, and this is my husband, Zachary Montalto. Okay. Um, if you want to describe the project for us? Yeah, sure. So we just moved in, uh, and we just want to install a fence. We have two dogs, um, so we're looking to fence in the uh, majority of uh, our backyard that is currently lawn, uh, not the part that is wetlands or wooded. Um, so... So the fence is around the perimeter, or yeah, sorry, no, my fence, my drawing isn't as professional as the one before us. It's mm. the red line, um, yeah. Oh, the interior that. one. Yeah, okay. yeah, the interior, and that is uh, within existing lawn. Um, as stated before, it is a minor activity under 310 CMR 10.2b2b. Yeah, we're uh, we're <laughs> essentially going along like the tree line that we have. Yep. And um, I. I did stop, I uh, went out uh, prior to filing with the homeowner um, and did measure, you know, the edge of the tree line is is about 30 feet from the edge of the wetland. Um, so, you know, where that is being proposed. Uh, in the public, in the application, they did mention um, clearing of invasive vines. I stopped out yesterday. Um, it is bittersweet. Um, climbing up some of the tall pines and uh, maples that are at the edge of the lawn area. Um, that was something that was mentioned as being managed and uh, yeah. is consistent with the commissions. Um, is it part of this application? Is it yeah. something they simply want to do? Are they it, making yeah, it, it part of the a, application? It was more of a suggestion of, of it's, Matt of it's just there, saying I, that this I is I noticed invasive. it in the, in the description, the work description, they talk about um, that, that there's invasive shrubbery and vines um, and leaves that they were looking to remove. And so I was curious as to what the invasives were. Um, the other thing is, you know, is dispose of it. Yeah, how, do you, how are you planning to dispose of the? That's a great question that I would uh, probably talk to Matt about. <laughs> burning, burn, um, brush pile is, burning in a brush pile is usually a, yeah. or a, you know, burn. Uh, or just put it, in yeah. a, put it in a barrel or um, a large garbage bag till yeah, the burn sure. season. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, part of um, the, yes, taking care of the invasives is, is great. Um, my only concern had been the mention of, of removing leaves. And if gotcha. there are leaves close to the buffer, we, we kind of like those to be left there. Um, yeah, know. we wouldn't remove anything outside of the fenced area other okay. than, so Matt had just said that the vines were. Yeah, the vines are outside. Were, so like, I think could it's damage the so trees. So we figured so, okay, we would so take care of them. Okay, so the cleanup is inside the fence, yeah. but the vines are on the outside. Yeah, I guess yeah. we just want to maintain the, the trees around us. Uh, we're going to do a chain link fence in the back. We're not mm -hmm. looking to, I guess, the alter view. the view or the property or anything, so. Okay. Um, no further questions? Um, any it. questions for members of the audience? And nothing from you, Matt. Okay. Um, conditional or um, regular? The, if the commission doesn't have any specific conditions, I can, you know, let okay. general. Can we don't want to have any specific conditions as to how they're going to deal with Sorry. the evasive weeds once they remove them? Uh, we can certainly add something you to You know, I'm thinking something like that might well, be good. direction. Yeah. It always seems to be an issue on how people tend to deal with that. that you didn't do it Can I just ask what is the concern? You don't want us to put them back into yeah, the Yeah, sometimes if you cut the bit of sweet and you put it in a pile, it just grows right back and, okay. you, and you make the Yeah, the vines, the, the seed, you know, the vines, the berries can start a whole new bunch okay. of plants. And so we wouldn't want it dumped elsewhere in the woods or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would yeah. definitely so that, not do that. That would be the only. Okay. Okay. Exactly what to do. Okay, yeah. perfect. <laughs> yeah. So, so that would be the only, yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Reason why it would have a conditional negative. Okay, so can I have a motion for conditional negative? I'll move. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's a plus. That's not a yeah. Yeah, that's a plus. <laughs> like in this case, negative is good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's really All important nice. signatures. Yeah, we got a lot tonight. Uh. Um. <clears throat> okay. Oh, thank you. Yes. Can I have a motion to close a public hearing? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Well, nice. Welcome to town. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I'll be in touch tomorrow. Okay. 
Um, moving on to our 7.20 p.m. agenda item, public hearing for Archstone Builders, LLC, 254 Concord Road, Lot 2A. Under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act, and Westford's non-zoning Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171, the Westford Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, October 12, 2022, at 7.20 p.m. in Meeting Room 201 at Town Hall, 55 Main Street, to consider the Notice of Intent Application of Archstone Builders, LLC, for construction of a single-family dwelling and associated site improvements and utilities within 100 feet of a bordering vegetative wetland at 254 Concord Road, Lot, a, lot 2A. Okay. Good evening, Mark Slager from Allen Engineering here on behalf of Archstone Builders. Uh, the project site is located at the intersection of Carlisle Road and Concord Road in that little triangular piece with Old Lowell Road. This is at the most southern corner. Um, the site includes the old um, farmhouse that was there and the area has been previously altered by the farm activities. Um, you can see in the aerial photo that I provided, there's the old farmhouse on the lower portion of the site. Uh, there's a farm stand structure right near the road in the lower right-hand corner there. Um, this photo was from 2019 on um, the Mass GIS, Mass Mapper site. So there's some other structures. Uh, I don't know what that white structure is. It might have been a trailer or something uh, that was parked there. That's not there anymore. Uh, and then there's also another structure that was off to the right of the, uh, the farm stand. Um, the lots have been reconfigured via an a and R plan that was endorsed by the planning board last month um, to allow for the construction of two new homes. Uh, you can see <coughs> We're on the right-hand lot. We can see the uh, driveway going in, the new driveway going in, essentially where the existing driveway is. The house is positioned just off to the right of where the existing house is now uh, over all previously disturbed area. Um, the outer red dashed line is the 100-foot buffer zone line. Uh, then the middle short dashed one is the 55-foot no construction zone and then the inner red line is the 30-foot no disturb zone, uh, which all are applicable to previously altered sites. And the blue line is our proposed uh, silt fence and straw wattles, which would delineate the limit of work. So we're proposing to construct a new four-bedroom home. <coughs> uh, the septic system will be in the front left corner of the, uh, of the yard, and there's a new water supply well off to the right. Um, also, according to the mass mapper, a portion of the area to the north uh, and northwest east rather is within the estimated habitat of rare wildlife and also the priority habitat of rare species. Um, I've taken an overlay of that and plotted it onto the lot to show exactly where that um, has been delineated by natural heritage, and I've uh, arranged the silt fence to coincide with that line so that we don't do any disturbance within that area. Although the, the um, area itself in looking at the entire triangle is, excludes essentially what used to be the old farm lot uh, with the exception of a small portion that went up abutting Carlisle Road, but it does include uh, the two new lots that were developed off of old Lowell Road as well. So. We, um, we're not having any impact on that area as well. Um, soil in the area was uh, very sandy, um, so it's a, a fairly small septic system. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to the commission for any questions. Jim? Two with regard to the conservation posts. Um, mm -hmm. It says that there's five of them. I only was able to count four, and I think you need another one or two up here. Um, yeah, I put them along the 30 one, foot no disturb. Three, four, and that's it. Five's up here. Five is up there. Oh, because so oh, this is the you 30. You want to put it in, outside the. Uh, well, that area is. Has, that That area in, has historically been mowed. In fact, it's still being mowed uh, to this day um, as part of what used to be part of the farm. Um, so they've just continued to mow it. 
we don't propose to do any work there, um, but we wouldn't mind just being able to continue to mow at least up to the 30 foot no disturb. Okay. Matt, are there restrictions on uh, priority habitat or estimated habitats? About I mean, mowing of, I had that same thought, Jim, um, about you know requesting the conservation posts go along the limit of the- That's where I thought they were. I didn't right, know it, it, exactly. Yeah. Um, but the state does revise those maps occasionally right. yep. and where this pro you know we don't know they, where it's going to end up in a they, year or two or three. right you know and so that was kind of you know they may so take but it think out. of it this way you know he's taking it right to the minimum right. you know he's right down to the 30 foot and he there's no reason why you know we have to let him take it right down to the 30 i mean he could pull those posts back along the that limit of work there and you know it's probably not a bad thing because that area floods out pretty good sometimes well, you know and i've seen it in the past get quite wet so i i'd prefer to see those posts not at the very limit of what he could potentially fill or alter i would prefer to have it pulled back to the limit of work mm -hmm. and well, i mean this was something sort of in consideration of having them at the th right at the 30 foot line for all the rest of it um, maybe that would be something. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's only right here that I'm talking about, Jim. Yeah, no, it, it, so right it's. So continuing across. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. So, so you're saying. Um, so I'm saying right here. I'm saying instead of let that right along up here. and getting that mode, it should be no. following that I, and allowing this to be more naturalized. Eric, you're saying this area in here yes. to be. You know, it should follow the blue line and, and not follow that 30 foot contour line. So, you know, because that's where the posts are right now on that 30 foot. Okay, contour so tighten line. up this in this general area, you know, so yeah, further. Be it. And also, you were you also saying to come across the the limit of work? Well, I don't know. He does. I don't see any posts further up this way. There is one other post proposed. Oh, I see it way up other. there. Yeah, right up here. Yeah, I would swing it back. You know, I would try to, there's no need to be bringing it out there and then have people continually mowing it. And you, you, we've all seen the creep. Mm -hmm. Things get mowed and they continue to maintain it and the post gets gone. And, you know, I'd prefer to limit that now. I don't have any other issues with the rest of it. The other, I had two questions. The other one was a comment. The uh, notes associated with the construction sequence didn't include anywhere where the posts would be installed. And based on where your um, erosion control barrier is, it could happen as soon as step one, installing your silt fence, or all the way up to here where it says the erosion growth can be removed. So somewhere up in here, we've got to put in the, the posts. Okay. One other thing for the commission's consideration, whereas this has, I mean, and this photo actually does a illustrating, um, you know, this is a previously disturbed site. Um, you know, the vegetation out, you know, we didn't receive any of the wetland data forms. Um, you know, I don't know what Hancock did to delineate this or when it was was it recently delineated or yeah this past spring okay okay and he did it with soil probes okay um but you know it for the commission's consideration was you know would you like to have a third party review the wetland delineation um whereas you know there isn't vegetation to go off of it's you know basically i mean it's Do you want to go out there with hancock and well I, I mean, i'm asking the commission if they want to have a third party you know to verify that this delineation is you're saying it was done based on soil probes mm -hmm. and that was it yeah. but we've had nobody take a look at the soil probes to confirm that the soils were as identified right or you know so why don't we just have confirmation of that if we don't have so get you it, know, have it peer reviewed yeah have them just okay yeah i can certainly yeah that. yeah no why not yeah i mean we're, we're, we've only got soils where there's no bit where there's no vegetation to serve as a second um data point you know yeah you know i have no reason not to trust hancock or you know but again we would like to just have the confirmation mm -hmm. Especially since what's the process for obtaining that would we choose somebody or does the commission choose somebody so i solicit proposals and you know get three responses and you know it's 
typically lowest bid, you know, lowest responsible, reasonable, responsive, uh, re responsible response, uh, you know. Um, so <laughs> it's an old cheapest bid. Yeah, cheap, yeah, yeah, for lowest bid. Go. Um, and you know, we can go, you know, and the commission, I can have those back for the next meeting for the commission to approve, and you know, we can keep this moving. This on the agenda again. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. for the commission to approve the, you know, and authorize, because I think it's 53G, I printed it out because it's one of those ones you never really use. Um, uh, General Law, Chapter 44, Section 53G um, is where the commission, and the commission has adopted this, I think, back in 2013. Um, so. It's a good idea. Um, yeah, I, I'm not questioning the commission's mm -hmm. ability. I just was wondering about the process. So yeah, timing and all of that. I get it. I yeah, shouldn't be bad. Um, um, for could I ask some clarification? I you know you want to move the conservation posts along here. Was there anything that you wanted to do down here? Yeah. What I'd like to do though is this is a pretty open area right here, and I would rather not see a lot of substantially tall growth in this area because of the traffic considerations. So you would have a tall what? I'm sorry, I missed it. traffic growth. considerations and sight distance. So if you get tall growth in that area. Growth. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the word. If you get tall growth in that area, it's going to impede the sight distance. So bring the blue line down to the fifth, see how the blue line intersects the 50? Yeah. Uh, so just have it come across that 50 and then outside that 50, you could maintain that growth. Okay. All right. All right. Makes because I see what you're saying. You want to have visibility. Yeah. But if you follow that post down to the blue and then come across the 50, right there. Then yeah. Then maintain outside of the 50. Mm -hmm. That is kind of what we would typically allow anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that works. All right. And that ties into a question that I have, Mark. Um, on the back side of the house, what is, what is the space, available, outside. The, the 55 foot no build zone. In terms of how much, what's the square footage out there in the case where a homeowner decides either they want an addition or they want to put a pool there? Everything within the blue. Yeah. Yes. Everything within the blue is what he's got to play with. So. Well, except the pool has to be outside the 55 because that's a structure. That's a little bit tight. Yeah. But, but it just looking at the plan, and I, I don't know what that's, that particular square footage is in terms of visualizing in my mind how big a spot the pool was going to take. I mean, well, they know, set the, the A&R, they well, set, I, I you know, the lots have been set. So, you yeah. know, but I'm just, I my, there's, there's also a consideration that someone has to, they have to know what they're buying. Yes. So mm -hmm. if they're buying this with the expectation that they're going to be able to use this <laughs> whole area, uh, I think they're going to be sadly disappointed when the reality sets I mean, in. That's usually in the. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. in the order exactly. we usually have that. Usually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have that language in the deed because. And the post will be there. Yeah. Yes, and, and the, the post, post will be there. Just, yeah. it's, well, I think that's that's why I was thinking if we could have a little more land up in this area, just to have them keep mowing it. If they want to put a pool, obviously they have to come back to the commission. At that point, you can require that they keep the pool and the patio and all of that outside the blue area but continue to use that as as so lawn may, area maybe because Ron, follow it along the 50 then yeah have it have it go along the 50 instead of following the erosion control that way that, that is what's what your plan just that little yeah. well no mine was at mine was at the this 30 in the 30 oh, the but 30. if i bring oh. it from here oh. directly over to the 50 yeah. where it intersects yeah. then yeah okay that, that that that's giving them a little bit more space. They so could put in a kidney shaped or do something, you know, maybe well, there's a little bit more. there's room for a pool without yeah. taking up yeah. all their lawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't foresee any structures going back there, but I think, you know, if the, if them and the neighbors want to just continue to mow over in that area and can, you know, play wiffle mm -hmm. ball or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's basically, you go out there today, it looks like nice mowed lawn, basically. Well, except it's probably not being mowed weekly. Um, probably not, but you know, several times a year. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, it just, I, I agree with Eric that <clears throat> we want a little bit more than the minimum. So it has this limit of work at the 30 to where it intersects the 50. Yeah. And then from the 50 well, to well, the lot line on either side, because he's got the 50 yeah, going so, out to so, so Eric, Road. Eric, to confirm. To, and then he's got the other one oh, up there too. Oh, and oh, oh, right yeah. along the 50. Um, so say. starting at Carla, if you hit menu. 
<laughs> yeah, just hit the X and I'll print. Okay. Um, okay. So starting at Carlisle Road, coming in at the 50. To the, to that, no, to yeah, his lip. The road to, to the, the road to, road to, to that. The to their, oh, right, the and wells And that here. goes up. And then around through here at the 30. And then and comes at this across. point continues then, yeah, up can, to the 50 right there. So <clears throat> do a straight line. Diagonally. Yeah, do a straight line to the property line. Right. With so a property you're not line dealing with, affects the 50. You're not, you're not trying to deal with um, a jog in in yeah. the grass. As long as he's got those posts clearly, yes. you know, so nobody's going beyond that, especially there where you know it can just get mowed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Well, that sounds good to me. Okay, that, gives, yeah. so that gives six, them a little more Six room posts to... and they'll be installed mm -hmm. relatively early then, right? If they're all going to be just outside their corrosion control barrier. Yeah. So there's no reason why they, have to, why they would even have to wait. They could get it done early. Right. Okay. Um, That's it for that. Okay, Matt, do you have any more? Nope. I will work on getting proposals for the commission to act on. Questions from the audience? That's what I was going to do next. Any questions from the audience? Yes? Do you know when like, construction is going to start and how long uh, it's going to take? Can you, can you come up and let us know who you are for the record? Sorry, um, Do you know when construction is going to start and how long is it excuse me, going to take? Um, well, uh, we depends on when we get the order conditions. Uh, the septic system has been approved. They still need to install the well, get that tested first. So they're hoping to start construction in early November. Mm -hmm. I don't know how long it's going to take, you know, five months, four to five months. You know, hours, that, like at what time they're going to start and end every day? normal construction hours yeah that's the building yeah, department yeah, yeah i think it's, it's 7 a.m is 7 7, yeah, I think 7 30 or whatever till whenever yeah but that's kind of regulated by the building department yeah. um so you could call them okay thank you thank you thank you so um continue to the 26th yes can i have a motion to continue the public hearing to october 26th so move second all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, moving on to our 7.25 p.m. agenda item. Um, request for modification of plan of record for 59 Hildreth Street, DEP file number 334-1788. Good evening, Mark Slager from Allen Engineering. Um, this is a project on Hildreth Street across from the entrance to uh, Hildreth Hills, or one of the entrances to Hildreth Hills. Uh, there's been some minor modifications, all for the better, in my opinion, from the eyes of the commission. Uh, Matt can pull up the plan. Uh, basically, the house has been shifted further away from the uh, wetlands so that it's now outside the buffer. The pool has been reduced in size. The patio area has been reduced in size. The retaining wall area has been reduced. The pool shed, the pool house has been eliminated. Um, so we've just basically reconfigured things, pushed, pulled a lot of things uh, closer towards Hildreth Street. Um, Eliminated part of the turnout for the driveway, so there's a big reduction in paved area. Um, so this came about when the builder requested an application to install the pool, and it looked uh, the plot plan looked considerably different from what the commission had approved. So Matt threw down the red challenge flag and wanted us to kind of explain things. So uh, here we are. <laughs> Um, so. Commission members have any questions? So what's <laughs> built is in red. No. Red is the one that or was already approved. Or, or was red, what's red in was proposed. Red was approved. Red was approved. Yeah. And then the... And then what we see is what we have. Yes. Yeah. What has been modif the minor modification to change. Is, is the in-ground pool 
going on top of the, uh, the roof drain? The roofing? Uh, no, that, that red system is where it's been approved. We're moving it outside the buffer to the other side of the house. Where's In that? fact, um, in black, the one uh, just. That's a septic. Uh, no, it's no, it says roof drain filtration yep. system. Oh, this is oh, this is the roof drain. Yep, sorry. Yep. Yeah, right in there. It goes away and it goes here instead. It's going to go there. Actually, with the way the gutters are going to work, we're going to actually put part of it here, another part, small part here, and then another small section here. So this I've got to amend. So this isn't even it yet. Right. Well, that just came about today. <laughs> so we'll, I'll submit another plan showing you where the roof drains are going to go. Um, but I also need to amend the stormwater permit that was issued for this site because this is in conjunction with the lot next door. The two lots exceeded one acre, so we needed a stormwater permit from the planning board. So I've got to redo all of that stuff too. But basically, there's, um, the only thing that's changing with respect to inside the buffer is a quarter of this leach area would be right in this area instead of right here. So the other one would be over in here, which is outside the buffer, and this one is outside the buffer as well. So we are reducing the size of the infiltration system and shifting it about 30 feet, 30 or 40 feet. Is there going to be a, um, I know it's not a pool shed anymore, but is there going to be a filter system someplace and where's it going to be discharged to? There's a to? six by six bump out on the patio so it's just going to be a, a on the slab there's a pool here and any backwash is going to go right into the infiltration system oh, and that's outside a hundred feet anyway. and that's outside the hundred foot buffer. Okay. all right good again it was just to keep the approved plan you know the minor modifications and the request before the commission was just to keep the so approved if we didn't plans. consider it a minor modification what would it be uh, I mean, it would be a amendment process, you know, full amendment. I mean, but that wouldn't be. I mean, I think there is a special condi There is a special condition that allows, you know, minor. Mo it does give me some limited ability. Um, but where everything seemed to be changing, I thought it best yeah, to come back. Yeah, at some point, before. it's like you know, it's, when does somebody come back in right, and say, I mean, hey, you know, we. I mean, in terms of, I mean. I view it as an amend, you know, the commission approved this laundry, you know, this punch list of things within the buffer. And as the changes, you know, if there's, if we're reconfiguring that on the lot, you know, that is something that I, I feel is a minor, minor modification. Um, where if it, you know, if there wasn't a pool proposed, you know, in terms of uh, the previous public airing at, you know, where at the end of, you know, if during construction, the buyer says, well, I want a pool. Okay, that's an amendment process because that was something that was not considered during the public hearing process. Yeah, I just I look at what was proposed. I look at what was built. You know, typically it's this is a little more I would deviation agree. than we would typically see. I mean, it seems like you have deference because in this particular instance, most of the work is further away than that was originally proposed, and there's nothing new that's been proposed from the original plan exactly so and everything I get that's it, being but I, proposed. I guess i would hope that in the if we approve something that you know what is being built is a little closer in scope to what we approve i i would agree and and it just kind of evolved um but the way we were viewing it was whatever we do is going to have less of an impact. So there's less patio area, there's less driveway area. The house, house is now outside the buffer zone. Uh, there's less total work in the buffer zone. Um, so we were looking at it as, you know, in yeah, regard I, to. I, I get it. Yeah, and, and, and I, we, I understand you know, where you're, you're coming from, back. where it's like. But at the same you know, time, we got to have a little pushback or else. You know, right. things are really going to quite deviate from what was originally Right, approved. yeah. So, you, know. you approved A and we're building B. Yeah. There's really not an A prime here or A yeah. subset one or whatever. So I, I understand that. But hate that. to have it become the norm. Right, I agree. Um, so, fine. Okay. Any questions from the audience? Um, okay, so 
Then <clears throat> to move this forward, we have an um, approve. Approve the request for the minor modification. So for can I have a motion time. to approve the request for minor modification? Second. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank Aye. you very much. Thanks. Next time I'll come back earlier in the process when we make changes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One at a time. <laughs> have a good night. Thank have a good you night. Too. Okay, um, moving on to our 7.30 p.m. agenda item. It's a public hearing for O'Neill, 54 Lakeshore Drive North. Oh, um, so for Archway, Archstone, we still didn't have a DEP file number? Just, no, we got a DEP file number for that one. We don't have a DEP file number oh. for any of the Oh, other. I see, yeah, okay. The, I was looking at the track changes. Yeah. Okay. Noel, you're going to read the no. uh, legal notice. Okay. Under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act, and Westford's Non-Zoning Wetlands Bylaw, Chapter 171, the Westford Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, October 12, 2022, at 7:30 p.m. in Meeting Room 201 at Town Hall, 55 Main Street, to consider the notice of intent application of Brian O'Neill for demolition and reconstruction of a fire-affected single-family dwelling and associated site improvements and utilities within 100 feet of Nadnasset Lake at 54 Lakeshore Drive North. Good job. Good evening. Jeff Hannaford and Dan Doherty representing the applicant at 54 Lakeshore Drive North. Uh, as you may recall, this was in before you for uh, a discussion item. Uh, they had an unfortunate fire at this house, and uh, so we're in now with a more formal filing and a more detailed filing on <clears throat> what's going to they would like to have happen moving forward. Uh, so what we have tonight is a plan showing a new footprint versus the existing. Um, the uh, existing is shown uh, dashed on your plan. Uh, the proposed is shown as a dark line with a cross hatch all the way around the perimeter. Um, you'll note that um, this is a little, this is a different footprint than the existing. Um, the existing, if you look at the plan, right in the center of the house, there's a note that says existing three bedroom. Um, yeah, thank you. The arrow to the right, the leader to the right of that note points to the back of the dwelling. Uh, where's my light? Didn't even tell oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, that leader where it's pointing to that dashed line, that's the back of the foundation of the existing building. To the left of it is an existing deck. Um, so what we're doing is the proposed house now, the rear foundation will be this heavy line with the cross hatch here. So the foundation's being moved further from uh, the lake. Uh, there will be a proposed deck across the back. Uh, the nearest corner of the deck will be a little bit closer to the lake than the existing deck uh, by a, a little over a foot. Um, when we were looking at this, we felt that that was, even though it's a little bit closer, it is a deck, and in this case, uh, the deck will be up at the first floor level with a walkout basement underneath. Uh, there will be crushed stone underneath it. Uh, there won't be anything uh, other than uh, piers and sauna tubes holding up that deck. So it'll be a minimal excavation in that area, even though it is a little bit closer. The main foundation, the main excavation, uh, will be further away. Um, and that does bring the front of the house right up to about the 100-foot buffer zone. It's approximately six feet uh, closer to the street than the uh, existing foundation. Uh, it's also centered a little bit more on the lot than the existing house. Uh, right now, the, the main entrance to the house is on the right side of the house. Uh, 
Uh, so there is a landing on the right side uh, that does encroach closer to that right side property line than the new right side of the building. Uh, they're going to have a, a front entrance, a main entrance right at the front of the uh, dwelling. Uh, so there'll be no need for any entrance on, on the sides. Um, what we've also done is, there, of course, it, it does slope from uh, the front to the back down towards the uh, lake. Uh, in order to achieve a walkout basement, the foundation, top of foundation, will be raised higher than what's existing. What that will allow them to do is to fill the front of the house between the driveway and the house. Right now it slopes <coughs> down to the house. Uh, so the runoff from the driveway runs right down to the front. Uh, it's not a good situation with runoff right now. So by raising it up, they'll be able to uh, fill that area so it'll be more of a normal walk straight in from the driveway to the new front entrance. Uh, filling that will require uh, a small retaining wall on the left uh, it can be graded off around the right side. Uh, we're also proposing uh, stone infiltration trenches on both sides of the house. Uh, that will mitigate any runoff <clears throat> that makes its way uh, from the front, but most importantly, the peak of the roof will run front to back, so water will be shedding left to right, and that's where those stone trenches are. So that'll help mitigate uh, runoff where there isn't really any now. Um, and as you know, there were a couple of trees that uh, had been burnt during the fire that have been removed. Um, and there is lawn area in the back right now. We do show an erosion control location to protect the lake during construction. Uh, and you'll see in the back of the house, there's a small circle with an S. That's a manhole over uh, the septic tank. Um, because of the fact that they're going to raise the house up, what it does now is it goes into a septic tank pump chamber and pumps up to the front. If you look in the driveway, there are two more of those manholes shown. That's where the leaching area is. Um, a Title V inspection was done since uh, we were in last. Uh, it did pass as far as the leaching area. Because it's being raised up and they're going to fill the front, it's an ideal time now to take those tanks out of the back, remove those completely, and move them to the front where they can gravity feed out of the house uh, to the existing leaching area, which is out of the buffer zone. So the new tank will be out of the buffer zone uh, as well as the existing leach field. So that's uh, a good improvement. So that S goes away. Goes away. Th this is what's very hard in terms of looking at an existing plan and a proposed because it you know looking at this it looks like that s is staying and we're right. having a lot of trouble understanding exactly what's what it's going to look like afterwards from this plan right uh just so you know there's a lot has been happening in a short amount of time uh -huh. for this particular project okay. i've been told about the title five inspection i have not received the report in hand so i haven't been able to address it definitively but I wanted to at least let you know that that's where they are in the process. It was just completed, but it hasn't been issued in, in a uh, paper format. All I got was verbal. But so at least. I guess this goes away and now it gravity feeds out to here? Yeah. Okay. Once I have the particulars on it, what we're going to end up showing is coming out of the front of the house um, will be a new sewer line to a septic tank. In, it'll be out of the uh, buffer zone. Yep. Okay. Yep. I just don't have the report to have that's the okay. No, okay. that's fine. That's fine. Just trying to understand it like you said. Yep. Jim? Yeah, you had mentioned that uh, small retaining wall here. Uh, how, how tall is this plan to be? Um, it'll probably be about three, three and a half feet at the house to zero at the front. All right. You know, the, the reason I'm asking is anything over says two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've Let's run into that. Thank three. you. All right. Yep. Good. Thank you. Um, okay. Now, with the deck, you're saying it's it's at the first it's at the first floor level rather than the walkout basement. So, is the 
um, 40.4 feet to the edge of the deck or to where where the um, the support will be? The That's to the edge of the deck. The support okay. will be further. Okay, because because normally we wouldn't want to see something going closer. So if it's if it's the same distance to the footing, we'd like to see that reflected on the plan. Okay. Okay. Yep. I just got can cantilever. Yeah. 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 We can do that. We cantilever the last one. Yeah. Foot yeah, and just but but also have that you know that it says that's what you could do on the plan so that right. we don't have to remember this conversation. <laughs> Um, any more questions from the commission? Um, members from the audience. I mean, I'm sorry. No questions further. from the audience. <laughs> no. Okay. So at this point, we continue. We continue to get some revisions and. Is this going plan to the zoning oh. board at any point? Yes. Okay. Uh, when are you planning on going before the zoning board? They're going to have a special meeting just for this, believe it or not. Okay. So, I mean, we could continue this to the... The 26th? Would you, yeah, would you? The 26th, okay. Yeah. yeah. I just didn't know if there was going to be changes from if we wanted to keep the public hearing open until after ZBA has had... Well, they can tell us they want us to keep it open. It's up to them. Mm -hmm. You know, if they close it and the ZBA has changes, they have to reopen it. So. You know, I'm assuming they'd keep it open. Do you have a date for the CBA yet? I don't, but I do have, I think, most of the... Uh, Would you... Talk to the chairman of the CBA and didn't see any issue with anything. It's just a formality that the building the inspectors make us do. Okay, and... Up to you. Um, yeah, do, uh, Trust me, I have no, no, I have no uh, issues moving forward about time frames or anything. There's no going to be any pushback from any yeah. departments so, or anything so like maybe that. Maybe we this. should wait. You know. Well, the, I, I, I guess would, the question is. I prefer not to wait for anything, to be honest. Okay, with then so continue to 26. To the, okay, so you want to be on. You're, you believe you'll be ready with everything for the October 26th meeting. If something doesn't play out, then we can continue. Yeah, beyond we'll that. ask for a continuance. Okay. If we can't make it all happen by then. So, can I have a motion to continue to the October 26th meeting? Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, moving on to our 7.40 p.m. agenda item, which is a continuation public hearing and issue order of conditions for the Damnasset Improvement Association project, um, DEP file number, do we have a? Still no file number. Still no file number. Hope we'll have a good discussion. Can have a discussion. We'll have, okay, have, we'll have, have a discussion, discussion and get, get it worked out. It'll get okay. written in, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, good evening. Good evening, Rob Walter uh, at 62 Lakeshore Drive. I'm a board of director on the Ned Nassau Improvement Association. And I believe there were some concerns or questions in terms of the order of conditions. Knowing that we don't have a file number certainly would entertain your uh, thoughts or questions. One that I did have was a timing issue. Um, in terms of giving notice for s some of the significant, like the retaining walls, the steps and, s and such. I think it says two weeks in the order conditions, maybe we move it to four weeks. Yeah, just to uh, Again, it's typical, you know, it's taking kind of our standard condition and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. we can certainly move it out to, you know, six weeks, you know, no, four weeks, six weeks, you know. So no, no long, no, so no it longer out than four weeks. Right. And right. no sooner than one week. One week, okay. Perfect. And I think Eric might have had a question about uh, how to dispose of the invasive weeds, and we're going to take a similar approach where we burn them in a in a, yeah, in a, yeah. in a drum. Yep. That's the intent. That's good. Yep. No, that's fine. Now, does does burning in a drum require the open burning permit from the fire department? That's a great question. We can. We can yeah, yeah, we, we yeah, can we can make that happen. Okay. You just make a phone call and see if you need it. Right. Yeah. Well, I just, I know that the fire department, because you can now request them online, there's a window when you're allowed to do it. And so right. I didn't know Until, if you... Until, I want to say it's... Like from it, January 1st to... I always to thought it was yeah, like February April. or something. I think it's like, April, it's like April 5th or something. It's right around my anniversary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I had a... Oh, was that... Did you have other 
questions about the or other no comments? i'm just I'm, my concern with not having the number is that i've submitted it twice to them mm -hmm. to the and it's somewhat not happening so if there's an electronic means of communicating with them or i can certainly check again i mean if with uh state and town offices closed on monday you know i'll give it to the beginning of next week and if yeah. not you know the circuit rider has been responsive um you know she did check to see that the check the pay that payment had cleared it just there was no hard copy at the dp nero office in wilmington so right. you know at which point a additional copy was resent so you know okay. it's been maybe a day or two at the office i don't know what their schedule is so i think giving you know a, you know waiting till the beginning of the next week and kind of checking in is you know appropriate is no. there go ahead is this work you're planning to start in the fall or are we lining things up for the spring we're lining the larger projects up in the spring the 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 fall would be the low impact maintenance like okay. having leaves taken up any acorns from the oak trees real minor stuff okay so do does the commission see an issue with removing those well, no. yeah. thank you um i did on the order of conditions i also did have a couple of comments sure um in the description and the second finding when it talked about annual maintenance mm -hmm. i kind of thought of rephrasing that as recurring maintenance because some of that you may not do every year that's a good yeah i like yeah, that so, so just recurring maintenance meaning it, it's it's more than once but not necessarily every year mm -hmm. um the other thing that i had wanted to add to condition 37 which talks about the disposal of materials from grounds maintenance mm -hmm. was to add a sentence um something along the lines of when invasive plant species such as oriental slash asian bittersweet etc are removed plant matter including roots vines and berries shall be disposed of in a way other than composting so that you know yeah. we're not kind of dumping it off onto the side and spreading it around yeah, it took me four years to get it out of my backyard yeah i got it yeah thank you okay what um else? so where well, we don't have the dp file number yet can continue to 26. okay so so we can in fact is we cannot in fact issue the orders no dp point. gets quite um upset when towns municipalities do that okay so, so i've been told so we, have to hold? so we have to continue to october 26th can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And you don't need me here on that because we've, we've we've already had this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Very much. Okay. Um, Seven forty-five. I know they just walked out the door. Yeah, it's all right. You'd be Hope walking right back. back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So <clears throat> moving on to our seven forty-five p.m. agenda item. Um, continue the public hearing and issue order of conditions for Roots and Shoots LLC. Um, DEP file number 334-1804. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we've, uh, Bruce Ringwald, GPR, we've, uh, Submitted in the plan with the modifications that we discussed at the last meeting. Um, and Matt has sent us the special conditions and everybody's reviewed them and I think we're all set with them. There's a, a minor change that Matt made to two points uh, for the owner from owner to applicant. Yes. Uh, if, you know, the, if the commission wanted to start with the plan or if we can, oh. you know, if they're yeah. address that for you see if that works for everybody and then you know move to the discussion of the special conditions so, you want me to explain the things that i did to the plan what would you like to do yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. let's just hear what the final uh, plan okay. is and then we'll just go so we um <coughs> we moved the fence from being along um is this the right plan oh yeah it is i just can't see the boulders yeah sorry, sorry. um we moved we had yeah, I see the boulders yeah, yeah so we had the fence along here and we moved the fence to outside we added the boulders with a note that the possible boulders 
uh, wall to retain the slope. Um, if these existing boulders are down too low in that area and it's too steep to grade through there um, as discussed and so therefore we move the, the, the um, thing out to that area um, I think those were the major changes I think everything else was pretty much the same we had already moved the, uh, the recharge we had already said that we were um, Removing the CMU wall and the fill. Um, and we already had the mix, the seed mix in there. Um, so I think we're, we're set with all that. We had discussed at the last meeting the possibility of, uh, in this area here, of planting uh, native plants versus uh, a wild mix, this is wild mix seed. And I think that Matt has that in the conditions well enough that we just have to the owner has to review with Matt the, either the seed mix or the plants that he's going to put in there. And uh, I think we're good on that. Okay. okay. No other questions from the commission? You're still considering the possibility of not building that uh, boulder fence. I mean, I'm sorry, the fence near the, the uh, new boulder. So, this one here. Is this a definite that you're building or no? The fence or the boulders? The fence. The fence is, is the fence definite? Yeah, I think, okay. I think it's, right. it's um, if, if it's it wasn't, okay with the commissioner. Some kind of um, conservation post markings on that area, but if there's a fence, then we don't need it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got any changes to these orders, or are you good with them? Uh, there okay. one what? minor one, uh, one comment as discussed with uh, the property owner. Uh, special conditions 31 and 35 um, state the owner. Um, I'm looking to change those to the applicant, which is uh, Roots and Shoots, the, com the contractor. Um, and then also, additionally, as was caught by numerous people, uh, where are you? Uh, number 48. Um, the second sentence should state the ongoing as opposed to whatever English I was trying to do. I didn't bother to comment that. I figured that was just going to be gone. <laughs> well, and I did have a question on condition 37 where it talks about um, condition 30. 37 talks about the disturbed area shall be stabilized within the same growing season the work occurs and no later than September 15th. If you're going to do the work <laughs> this year, yeah. September 15th is not Coming peaceful. gone, yeah. yeah. So it just, you know, how do we want to handle that? Um, that I can change that to, um, in 2022 where work is proposed in October and November um, work is to be stabilized as soon as possible following completion of the um, removal of the retaining wall um, in subsequent years disturbed areas shall be stabilized by September 15th. Okay. I kind of I, I read it quickly and I thought that the next sentence kind of handled it any areas not satisfactorily stabilized by December 1st shall be Temporarily stabilized for the winter months, using yeah. the jute mat and the yeah, things. I mean, yeah, I mean we'll put if they get to the point and if we remember two years ago, I think it was two years ago, it was either 19 or 20, I can't remember. We had a really warm November and December, and I I had several projects where we literally did wetland replication, and they were the best wetland replication projects that I've had going mm -hmm. <laughs> in a long time. But you know sometimes you get a warm warm, warm uh, late fall early winter and you get seed to juvenate mm -hmm. um, sometimes you don't so uh, my assumption is is that we'll get down the loam and we'll seed it and we'll put you know erosion control either by tackifier or straw or jute mat if it's a slope and if it is uh, not established then we're gonna have to redo it in the springtime but it will mm -hmm. be kept stabilized by those it's a plan that, that works. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That works. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, can I have a motion to 
issue the order of conditions as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry to be here, but we're yeah. going to get it right. Do. It's okay. We wish you appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate we you working you. with us. We thank you for, for all the work with us. Yeah, definitely. I, I appreciate everyone's time and patience uh, with the process. Um, I've learned a lot, you know, through this, and um, you know, uh, I'm just happy that we're we're progressing along and you know bringing this to a close that's satisfied for everyone and um, moving forward. And we yeah. hope your family has a wonderful time in their Western home. Yeah. Future well. commission we're, member down the road. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we're still playing soccer in the front yard, so I tell him like, watch for the car and make sure don't go chase yep. after the car when it's like you'll always yeah. off the road. But, you'll yeah. always but thank you for yep. very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Much. Have a good night. Thank thank you. You. Okay. Motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You're good. Thank yeah. We we just yeah we just we need just to wrap things it. up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to our 7:55 p.m. agenda. 7:55 p.m. agenda item. Discussion with M. Castor, 38 Lakeshore Drive North, regarding the removal of trees in a buffer to improve rooftop solar capability. Uh, so I are here for this, Dan, or just curious? I'm here for the sailors because I know they're in Italy. Yeah, oh. no, uh, yeah, they, I got that. E I got that email at the beginning of the week. Um, I mean, she's, she is looking. She is looking to see. She is looking to see. Um, uh, they reached out regarding, you know putting solar on the roof of their property on the north side of uh, Namnasset Lake. Uh, there was a photo as prepared by, I think, a solar, potential solar installer showing the, um, there are significant trees around the property. Um, again, with it being on the lakes within the buffer to the land subject of, uh, bordering land subject to flooding and, and underwater bodies and waterways. Um, I didn't know how the commission, what the commission's views were on. So what, what's being, the way I understood it when I read it was that, um, trim, okay, no right? trees had to come down. It was like selective Trimming. pruning of right. branches. And, here and so I was like, so further describe that. And I'm thinking if it's, if it's minimal pruning of branches to provide, you know, additional open area, that's fine. I know in the past, we don't want to see trees come down because that's always, you know, that opens up a wetland and a buffer zone. You know, you lose that shading, it becomes more open, it dries out quickly, it, it changes the characteristics. But if we're talking about a couple of branches on, on, you know, then I'm thinking, yeah, we're with. Yeah, I mean, the email, again, received after, uh, you know, last week was, you know, the um, be on the roof, and his comments were that some of the trees would have to be quote limbed up or removed. Oh, I didn't see the removed. Okay, so, and that's where up. you know now we're cutting down trees to improve and solar we're capacity. Also thinking about perpetual maintenance to keep that to keep it open, so so the trees grow. They have to be limbed up in the future. You know, it. My thought is, you know, if. Hmm? I mean, I was that out at the site a couple years ago when they came to do the demo rebuild. Um, my thought is, you know, if a rest, you know, if a replication, you know. If they could replicate what they cut out somewhere else on site. That on you're... site or, you know, have, I mean, I also know that those trees are the bank stabilization for, you know, it is a good size slope. I, so it's, yeah, it's there's you no know, indication of wh exactly which trees, well, where they are. There's no clear much. plan. Right, right. I mean, and, so and let so them come in with a clear plan and then we'll yeah. have that you discussion. Need to, you need to take a look. So you can I mean, but I mean, but would that be a notice of, in, I'm assuming notice of in. Well, sometimes we bring people in for a discussion just, just a and discussion based on our discussion, we tell them how we want them to proceed. So I prefer to have some of that dialogue okay. and then we can see how best to, and we want to proceed. Can you bring the, because one of the things that struck me is, is you can see the fence between them and the neighbor's property. Is they are potentially, is, is right now the neighbors don't have trees that impact their solar. 
but are we potentially getting into a situation where trees on the adjacent property start to impinge on their solar capability? Right. So, so this is, north is to the top of the page. So I mean, western afternoon sun, these trees would be impacting western afternoon sun. And so, yeah, I, it's. But I'm also thinking on the other side as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's just, the, the lot is 50 to 60 feet wide. And you, you start to think about well, we don't trees. allow people to cut down trees to maximize their ability to gather solar. I mean, that's not. Yeah, but it just, it, in terms of maintenance, is, is 10 years down the road, does all of a sudden their solar is not working effectively because the neighbor's trees have grown up? Yeah, it just, you know, there are layers to this. Yeah. It's not just what we do now, but it's, it's also what happens going forward during the life of these solar panels, because the trees are going to keep growing. Weren't there already trees cut down on this property for the rebuild? Too? I think there was one or two at the front. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Dan. Yeah. Dan knows. <laughs> yeah, Dan. Yeah. Not knowing anything about this, I just read this tonight when I was seeing the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's always and good. If if they were to do something, is there a, a, a way to, like, if they're going to cut, like, say, two of the major trees down or whatever they have planned, is there a way to plant, like, three trees in their place, or four yeah, trees in their place. Well, we always ask that, but you know, yeah. it remains to be seen what can be done. You know, well, I know, I, mean, I can, I, I hear what Matt said. Maybe. You do have to keep those, at least the, the stumps <laughs> are there to hold back that hill. So um, my question would be, you know, I'm, I'm, they're in Italy, so I know they're in Italy, that's what I do. <laughs> so when, I, when they come back, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll have this conversation. I will say to them that, you know, whatever this commission will want, I mean, they don't, it's, I don't want to waste your time in what it is. If it's going to be, I can, and I can see the, what Margaret said about how it's going to be down the road, then everybody's okay, we're all going to get solar panels, and I'm looking at it like, I'm not going to see any trees on the lake anymore. No, you won't, no, because, yeah, they're all, they're all on top of one another. So, uh, that will make but sense I'm saying is, if a policy was put in place, you know, or, or a tendency to create a policy, even if it's not a written one, that says, okay, if you're taking down two, you're gonna plant, I mean, taking down one, you're gonna plant two. And I've always felt that that's a way to get. If it has the same effect. True, but you know how tight these lots are. It seems like there's it really the very limited areas to put trees because these either lines or foundation. Yeah, or yeah or not, but I mean, I think it depends on the, you know, the caliper and the type of tree that you, that you plant. Like, we planted two maple trees in our yard that, you know, was like, I'm gonna say it was like a, a dozen years ago. And they're huge and they shade the whole patio, everything. So I think there's a, a, a methodology that can be used to yeah. say, how does everybody get it? Because what happened? But then again, like you said, you don't want to see Lab right. and become devoid of tree. Exactly. All of a sudden, you lose all your large mature trees, and people are putting up saplings, you know, that look like this, you know, speaker right. pole. Right. What I'm saying know. is, if you, if you, if, if there was like, okay, I've got, to, I've got to take down this, this old pine tree or something down, but you got to plant like two shady maple trees that aren't going to grow above your roof line immediately. I mean, is that a is that a policy that would work? Well, I don't let's see what, what, yeah, let's see what the, where the discussion or, goes. Let's yeah. bring them in and yeah. you know. Yeah, because the other discussion. Yeah, I think it's new territory for us too. Yeah, because in terms you, of, of that kind of trade off, you know. Jim, but you have to think long term. Matt, when you uh, ask them about coming back in for to continue the discussion, if you could ask them to um, have some indication for us of whether. The, where the trees are, which ones they're talking about, whether they're to be cut, removed, or just trimmed, that kind of thing. So we have an idea. Yeah, so we have, yeah, a idea. have a better, again, this was, you know, as a kind of get the, again, not a, we're not averse. I wasn't sure, but this is, this is, you know, something that I sh I, I'm certain, you know, we will see much more of as, you know, the demand to, you know, uh, put solar on roofs and, you know, and if you talk to the circuit rider, this might be an interesting question for them because there are some environmental yeah. benefits to putting solar panels rather than using more electricity off the wires. But, yeah. but, it, but if it's having an adverse impact on the interest of the act, then right. you know, we're here the to protect the now. interest of the act. Strictly but, the way it's written now has yeah. nothing to do with solar. But solar. one of the things I'm thinking is you think about these large shade trees, is, is they're keeping the lawns from baking out. 
is you get rid of that tree cover, you've got lawns baking out that either need to be irrigated or the ground just dries out that much more and we have just that. Well, it's not, it's, let's have, it's, them, let's have yeah. them come in and let's have that discussion. Let's well, not have they, this discussion now. Well, no, because they're going to watch it on, they're going to watch it yeah. on cable TV. But then, yes, if they want to talk about it further, they can come yeah. back with more details. Yeah, yeah. And, and it may be problematic because because this lot is less than a sixth of an acre. So it's not like they've got a lot of room. Oh, I know. To mitigate removal of trees and stuff the, like that. The, the reason why this, this is really striking is if you know Maja Casas, she loves her trees. So she's not a person that would want to be taken down in general, where you've met her, so you know what I'm talking about. She, she's a, loves plants and flowers and everything. You know, she's just, she's that person. So if there wasn't for the benefit of the solar. It's just not a simple yes or no. I get it, I get it. No, I'm so not. that's fine. But I, I, I can see, I can see from what Margaret has said, the, the complications going forward. Right, yeah. The, the well, microbes. who's to say that that guy, you know, right there, once if we want to plant trees on the right side, there on the fence line, and then all those will cut, you know, and who says, you know. Yeah, or the, no. guy, the guy on the right side, he's taking a tree down, and so we say you need to plant another one, and he says, well, let me plant one so I'm not looking at my neighbor's house. And right. But that's why I was saying if it, you know, there should be some forward thinking going on here in the mm -hmm. sense that, you know, if, if there's a like a standardized policy that says it has to be like a six inch, six inch caliper and it's got to be already 20 feet to be planted, if that's something that's replacing it, that can be, you know, cost prohibitive for people to do, but it's the right thing to do if you have a hill in a situation like this, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's a way. It's not prohibitive in Westford anymore. Uh, <laughs> well, it doesn't seem to be, does it? No, I know. It doesn't seem like it. But I, th I think there's a, a you know, because at some point I'm looking at it from also the perspective that, you know, the, the state may mandate if you can put a solar on, do it. Like right now, I'm so, Westfield hasn't done it yet, but in other towns when you build, you have to show where the solar panels are going to go. And if you don't have some sort of solar component to it, you don't get a building permit for a new house. Yeah, so but I mean, right now they have a solar component, they're just not able to maximize it. And it's almost like saying to somebody, you know, we're giving you a yard, but we can't give you the biggest, greatest, best theoretical yard you'd want, but you got a yard. I mean, right now somebody's got solar. It may not be at its maximum well, no, efficiency. No, it's not on there. Yeah. No, it's not installed. That's and just, that's what's that's proposed. That's proposed. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. again, it may not be at its maximum efficiency, but we're allowing them to put it up there and get some benefit. Mm -hmm. It's just not as, potentially as good as it could be, but at the same time, we have tree. So let's have the discussion. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we could talk about this all night right now. So it's interesting. Let's not. It's, it's a new chapter. I think it's okay, pretty fascinating because I think it's coming. You know, I'm, I'm looking at both sides. Yeah, I just walked into this. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll see, okay. you. see you. Have a good night. You Thank you, Dan. OK. Um, so moving on to our discussion and action items, reviewing the proposed 2023 meeting dates. Marilyn. I only found one, and that was, uh, I looked quickly here at your agenda. Uh, November uh, 22nd, the night before Thanksgiving, I'd never be here. Yeah, I wouldn't be yeah. here the night. Yeah, so, yeah, so here's what we, so. so similar to this year, because there's five Wednesdays in uh, November. Yep. Uh, Thanksgiving is on, oh, no. At the 23rd. You're not, you don't have to think it's the 23rd, you're correct? You're proposing the meeting on the 23rd. No, so yeah, we're proposing the meeting, the meeting on the. 22nd. No, we're so proposing the meeting the for the shaded. On the 29th next, and the next year. Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. Where are we, guys? We're good. Look, Look on the, the map there. The November 8th is a meeting, and November 29th is oh, a I meeting, so we're good. And they're good. Oh, that's fine. That works fine. Yep. Yeah, because we want to avoid that one, and then Valentine's Day. You know, in 2024, but we can have this conversation. Well, we can have a conversation. Again. Next, we can have the next conversation. Yeah, we can move that. Yeah, at some point. Yeah. Maybe Eric can be chair. So uh, <laughs> have nothing to do on Valentine's. Well, no, it's my the thing is that's my husband's birthday, so I've got. No, don't do it. No. We'll just. Well, we'll just. That day, you know. Once in a while, just accommodate somebody. The entire yeah. year is going to be fine. Yeah. So uh, I think that's a non-issue. Just bring it up. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's a long time from now. 
bring it up early so nobody can, you know, sabotage yeah. it. Oh, yeah, it's not even 23. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. great. Okay. If that's, uh, appreciate the commission's thoughts on that. So the dates are good. Um, and now we're moving on to accepting trail easements. So these were trail easements that were previously uh, were brought before the commission as a part of the um, Juniper Hill subdivision and Cloverleaf Field subdivision. Um, on the plans uh, for Juniper Hill, it is the access easement is literally this kind of shaded area where my mouth mouse is um, across parcel J, which allows people to get to parcel A, which is the open space which was conveyed to the commission. Um, that sounds good. And second, the second E trail easement is for uh, at Cloverleaf Lane, which was a new subdivision, uh, had this discussion probably I don't know, 18 months ago. Um, but they are proposing a trail easement in the location of the former wood road out uh, between the cul-de-sac and I think it's at 31 Old Lowell Road. Um, I, this was before the select board at their meeting last night. They conditionally approved both of these uh, subject to the commission's review and approval. Uh, the documents were reviewed by town council. Um, and I recommend the commission accept and endorse the trail easements for uh, um, okay. the bottom two, Juniper Hill and Cloverleaf. So can I have a motion? Um, okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so there are four or three to sign. Three, because there's oh, actually an the easement, easement across 31. Okay. Madam Chair, if I may continue to sick sure. more in Cyprus, just to, as of three, there's, I thought there were only going to be two. There's an easement that continues the Cloverleaf Lane. Um, so there's two for one. Oh, it goes two, two, on, two on Cloverleaf, yeah. one on yeah. Juniper, right. but nothing. And no, nothing for Balsam. Yeah. yeah. Um, an update on the Sycamore and Cypress plantings. They are currently at a uh, contractor yard in Littleton. They will, I will buy, I, I have a shovel in my office. I will, you know, fit fit the five foot ser, uh, service berry in the back of my car if I need to, to get this what thing. What they say done. on that television show? Winter is coming. Okay. Um, so there's an update for that. Um, 115 Conquer Road, we received a res report, but I thought we were, what we were looking for was an explanation of like how to interpret it, how to read it. So in, they are um, working with um, Paul McManus and Ecotech to develop the kind of environmental site plan, restoration plan of the property. Um, and I, he offered to come to this meeting, but I wanted to make it worthwhile for to have a fruitful discussion of both the sampling results and kind of the his his part of it, but also. Um, the restoration part of it because that is a you know a significant component to this um, so I kind of you know, told him to you know we'll we'll get him at another meeting to come and you know we'll, uh, kind of update the commission and kind of hit all the, so the test results from, that were printed so the test the results time. from the last meeting were the soil results these results are of the monitoring um, well were of the water the groundwater and the, the groundwater well, yeah. and the monitoring wells um, and there's again all these were actually non detect as opposed a, to uh, an agenda a, li a top agenda a list of topics when they do show up one of them would be describe our testing results and then this of the water and then of the uh, uh, the soils yep great perfect uh, but again they keep coming in so I keep making sure the commission sees them thank you um, in an update for the Stony Brook Conservation Area, uh, the broken Stony Brook Trail Memorial Bench, I've uh, emailed Garside. I've, we've been playing phone tag, so I thought an email may be best, but uh, yeah. Uh, I may be stopping I've, in tomorrow. I've I'm thought about ready. it. I was driving up the other day. I was like, oh, maybe I'll just pop in. <laughs> is he here? No, I didn't actually do it. Well, I may go there tomorrow. I still don't have Bob's headstone. That's, so um, still waiting on that. 
we'll keep that till that gets resolved. Thank you, Madam Chair, for letting me drive the meeting for a little bit. <laughs> well, thank you. Okay. So, <clears throat> moving on to the minutes for September 14th, 2022. Um, have people had a chance to review them? Any comments or corrections? Okay. Um, seeing none, can I have a motion to accept the minutes for September 14th, 2022? Well, uh, second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. Yeah, wasn't I? Oh. Yeah, you are. Yes. You should abstain. Yeah. Okay. I just did. So, okay, so four accept and two abstain. Okay. And moving on to the minutes for September 28th, 2022. Um, any comments or corrections? Um, seeing none, can I have a motion to approve the minutes for September 28th, 2022? Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. No site visits to record or schedule. Um, we need to schedule a meeting for town meeting, for a special town meeting. We Do we if, don't need to meet for anything? Yeah, I don't only think. Only if you don't. I mean, it's. They, yeah, I don't they, think there's they, anything they put, on there that we need yeah, to t take any position on. The town clerk typically does a, all boards and committees okay. during the meeting, just in the event something comes up. But if you guys don't want to meet beforehand, which I, don't think I, don't you need think to. I concur, so. Well, I'll be there too. We'll be there, and if they want us to, we, need to say we can convene. Can. Yep. Jim? We had, I can't um, be there. Uh, in our package, Sorry, yeah, it was under miscellaneous, I think, 7 Juneberry Lane, the update to Monday. the uh, removal of the basketball court in the buffer zone. I pick up Lane. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. uh, I assume this was just provided because it showed the updates to the notes that they included. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, I was trying to count up the conservation post and I couldn't get to 17. There's a big black squares. Can anybody else get 17? I got 16, but I will follow, I'll follow up with the engineer. Okay. And because that may have been a, um, the 17 may have been a prior, oh. you know, a, w when prior it was, iteration. yeah, when it was a little bit further down. So. Okay. But otherwise, oh. it's good. Okay, um, so. so there will be one, two, three, and will you be at town meeting? Yeah. Four and five, I will. Okay, so if we need to, we can also yeah, have quorum. Yeah, quorum. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, in that case, if there's no other business, can I have a motion to adjourn? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.